It's been hard for me to find a zero drop shoe. If you knew from my last zero drop shoe review, I wasn't really a zero drop guy. But in all fairness, I really haven't tried a whole lot. So when I got six or seven runs in the Ultra Via Olympus, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Not blown away, this is an amazing shoe surprise, but it's a, it's a pretty good shoe and there's a spot for this potentially in my rotation. But the price point that Ultra put on this is probably one of the biggest stretches for a price point I've seen in running in 2023. So is it really worth it? Mm, not quite sure on that. But for me to find a zero drop shoe that I actually liked, it, it's not that bad. Now that the Ultra by Olympus is a new shoe by Ultra, let's talk about some quick specs on the shoe. As always with Ultra, zero drop, 33 millimeters, sitting on top of what they call their Ergo Max midsole. This shoe has their traditional foot shape, which allows for a lot of foot spreading, which is why I found some benefit in this shoe in what I'm talking about. It is said to have some sort of a rocker shape, which helps with the off toe propulsion, but I didn't quite feel that when I was running compared to some of the other rocker shoes that we have. Yes, other brands have a lot more accentuated rockers than this one, but I just didn't even feel really any rocker in this shoe at all. The upper is a well-built, hardy, sturdy, breathable material, but it is hardly what they described on their website as an ultra light upper. This shoe comes in at 11 ounces, but when I was running, it actually felt a little heavier, but that's okay. I really found this shoe to be great in easy paces. So with the quick specs out of the way, where did I find this shoe valuable and where did I think this shoe was pretty good? After hard workouts, I kind of want a shoe just to go run in, shoe to give my foot some space to work, not that race feel upper, a little bit of ability for the feet to spread out, but also some good cushioning to protect the feet after the hard workouts that I do. And this shoe really hit that spot. It actually, was really interesting. After I got about five runs in the shoe, I reached for this shoe first after my hardest run in this half marathon training block. Why? I don't really have an answer to that. It was just happened to be the first shoe that I reached for. Cause I was like, man, I really want my feet to spread out and just relax on this run. And yes, I ran through my invincibles and yes, I ran through my glide rides. So I don't have like a ton of like easy day specific shoes, but this, was the one I grabbed and it's worked out great on those easy runs. And with an easy day shoe, the second amazing benefit, I've gone almost 60 miles in this shoe and it looks like it hasn't even been ran in. And as you know, with easy day shoes, they're a lot less hard on the material and on the wear of the shoe. So this shoe is built like a tank. I think this shoe is probably going to go upwards of 450, 500, even higher than that mileage because I definitely am not gonna be putting any fast paces in this shoe. But on the easy days, this is gonna be a really good shoe to go for. So for being able to go 500 plus miles, it's pretty good. Is it good enough to justify the number one thing that is the major drawback of the shoe? The cost. So let's rip the Band-Aid right off. The not so good. $170 for this shoe. $170 for a shoe that is just a easy day, nah shoe. Not anything special, not anything great. It is by far the biggest stretch I've seen for a shoe cost in a really, really long time. There is a nothing special about it upper. There is a nothing special about it midsole other than the fact that it potentially is the most durable of all the easy day shoes. I don't think you're gonna get as many miles in a Nike Invincible, which is $180 new. I don't think you're gonna get as many miles as you do in the glide ride. Less than this at $160 new, 150 sometimes. And for a shoe that has nothing special about it other than a really high stack height and zero drop, it is a real struggle at $170. Number two, and one of the things that is a, is a drawback for me as far as like the performance of the shoe is you can even see as it, I lace it up before getting in here, this tongue is incredibly short. Now it's not so short that it caused problems on all my runs, 
but on one of my runs, the tongue did actually slip below the first layer of laces when I was running and caused quite a bit of discomfort. And I looked down, I was like, whoa, man, that tongue is really dropped low. And that's just a major bummer is to have a tongue this short is almost like a manufacturing or a design flaw because it is really, really short. So I think you can understand my verdict. The verdict really is, it depends on how much you love zero drop. And for me, I'm not 100% sold on the zero drop. So to drop another $170 on another pair of these shoes, I just don't see why that is a value to me. But if you are sold and you are fully on board with the zero drop midsole, then yeah, maybe the $170 is worth it for you. But I do know there's other easy day zero drop midsole shoes that have a lot better value for you as a runner. So I'm, I'm not going back and getting this one. Sorry, Ultra. I like the shoe, but not at $170. Money.